Goa, the party capital of the country. No doubt it has got great beaches, shacks and pubs. But did you know that Goa is actually a gold mine of natural beauty? A lot of people visiting Goa don't explore beyond beaches. There are so many beautiful places in Goa that are worth the visit. From incredible beaches to mesmerizing waterfalls and from beautiful churches to great forts, Goa has a lot to offer. In today's video, we will talk about best places to visit in North Goa. If you're looking for other details like how to reach Goa, where to stay, total budget and a lot of other informations, then do check out my previous video. I'll drop a link to that video in the i button or in the description box below. Without further ado, let's jump into our list of top 20 places to visit in North Goa. In the early 90s, parties and loud musics were banned in Goa. That's why foreigners used to do underground parties in Arambol. If you see it on the map, Arambol is situated in extreme north and it was a very remote place at that time. Arambol was a perfect place to host parties without getting into trouble by the local police. It used to be the hippie capital of Goa and you find a lot of international tourists, especially Russians, at this place. As of now, Arambol is no more a secret place but it still has a lot of hippie vibes attached to it. Arambol beach is filled with so many shacks. If you are hungry, then you can eat at one of these shacks while enjoying the incredible view of the ocean. This is a great beach to spend time with your friends and family but the main reason why Arambol is famous is for its sweet water lake. It is a 20 minutes walk from the beach to the sweet water lake. On the way to the lake, you find so many shopping options. If you are planning to buy something, then this is one of the best places to shop. The sweet water lake is right next to the beach. This is a perfect place to get into the water. The depth of the lake is 4 to 5 feet, which is ideal place to swim even if you don't know swimming. If you need to change your clothes, then you can use these changing tents at nominal cost. It is a good idea to rent a bed for about 100 rupees so that you can chill by the lake, especially if you are planning to visit it in the afternoon. There are two more hidden spots here. One is where you get natural Multani Mitte and the other is the banyan tree where a Baba sits. These two places were banned when we visited. If you want to explore them, then you can give it a try when you visit Arambol. Kalangut Beach and Baga Beach are next to each other. These beaches are one of the busiest beaches in Goa flooded by tourists. The only reason you might want to visit Kalangut or Baga Beach is for water sports activities. Water sports are available in many beaches and the prices differ from one place to other. The Kalangut and Baga remain the popular places for water sports with reasonable rates. You can either do selected water sports or you can go for a complete package. I found going for the complete package is much economical. The water sports package usually include 5 rides, jet ski, banana ride, bumper ride, boat ride and parasailing. The prices of these packages can vary from 1200 rupees to 2000 rupees based on your bargaining skills and duration of the activity. My suggestion is to walk along the beach and inquire with multiple operators. I will make a separate video on water sports and other activities you can do in Goa. Make sure to subscribe to this channel not to miss that. Anjuna beach is one of the happening beaches in Goa. It has a wide range of shacks, pubs and restaurants to choose from. The beach in itself is quite small and crowded just like other beaches. Anjuna is yet another great place for water sports with slightly better prices and service as compared to Baga or Kalangut. Anjuna is famous for its Wednesday flea market. It is a good place if you are looking for shopping options. There are a lot of popular eateries here that you can try out like Eva Cafe, Purple Martini and Burger Factory. I'll cover the places to eat in Goa in another video, so stay tuned for that too. Vagathar is a popular beach in North Goa next to Chapora Fort. There are not many shack options on this beach, but it is a great place if you want to get into the water. The best part about Vagathar beach is its sunset. This is a perfect place if you want to watch the beautiful sunset. Next to Vagathar beach is Ozran beach also called the Little Vagathar. Ozran beach is relatively less crowded as compared to Vagatar. There is no proper pathway to reach the beach. You will have to climb down for a couple of minutes to reach the beach. Do visit Ozran beach early in the morning to have the entire place for yourself. Goa has some beautiful white sandy beaches among which Ashwam beach is one of them. Ashwam beach is less crowded so if you are looking to spend peaceful time away from the crazy crowd then this is a place to be. 
This is a hotspot for international travelers as the crowd is less and the beach is beautiful. There are limited shacks and restaurants at this place. So if you're looking for food, then better check eateries in Anjuna Beach. Ashram Beach is an amazing place to watch the sunset as well. Goa is filled with so many beautiful churches. If you want to visit churches, then there can be no better place than Old Goa. One of the very famous churches in Goa is Basilica of Bom Jesus, popularly called the Old Goa Church. The reason why this church is so popular is because it houses the mortal remains of Saint Francis Xavier. Saint Francis Xavier was a Christian missionary and his dead body is kept in this church. It is a miracle that his body hasn't decayed for the past 400 years. Opposite to Bom Jesus Church is Se Cathedral. The word Se means see in Portuguese. Se Cathedral is considered to be one of the largest churches in Asia. Just 700 meters from Se Cathedral, you will find Saint Augustine's Tower. This was one of the biggest churches during Portuguese time, but it got demolished and only remains can be found here. If you are someone who loves to dig into the history then don't miss this place. Immaculate Conception Church of Our Lady, simply called the Panjim Church, is one of the most popular churches in Goa. No doubt this church is very beautiful, but the main reason for its popularity is because of the influence of film industry. This church is featured in a lot of movies and as far as I remember, the recent one is Ashiki 2. It was originally a small chapel where people used to gather for prayers. Later in 1600, it was converted to a church when Portuguese were doing their religious expansion. A lot of improvements were seen since then, and what is seen now is a beautiful church with a unique crisscross architecture. Panjim Church houses Goa's second biggest bell. This bell was originally installed in Augustine's church, but when Augustine Church got demolished, the bell was shifted to Aguada and then later to Panjim Church. If you love to explore ruins then visit facade of old Sankwal church the church is called our lady of health and it is situated on the banks of zuari river the church was originally built in 1566 but due to a fire accident it got destroyed in 1834 and what remains now is only its facade it was declared a national monument in 1937 and since then the facade is preserved in its original form the place is secluded and you will not find any crowd here That means if you're someone who is looking for some calm place amidst the chaos then you must visit old Sankwal church. Diwar Island is Goa's largest river island located near Panjim and it is surrounded by Mandavi river. There is no connecting bridge to this island so the only way to reach it is by taking a ferry ride. You can take a ferry ride from multiple places depending on your location. We took a ferry ride near old Goa churches. A short and sweet 5 minutes ride would take you to Diwar Island. You can take your two wheeler, car or even tempo traveler on this ferry. And the surprising thing is that they don't charge a single penny for passengers or two wheelers. There is a minimal charge for four wheelers. Diwar Island is a very calm place away from the crazy crowd you usually see in Goa. The countryside roads are very scenic and you get authentic Goan vibes the moment you land here. Diwar Island is famous for its church called Our Lady of Pity Church. It is a beautiful place to spend some quality time and soak in the beauty of nature. Apart from the church, there is nothing much to see on this island. Next to Diwar Island is yet another amazing place called Charau Island. Unlike Diwar Island, Charau Island is surrounded by water only on three sides. You can reach this island by ferry ride or you can also reach it by road. Charau Island is famous for its Salim Ali bird sanctuary. There is a mangrove walk inside the sanctuary which went viral on Instagram reels and since then a lot of tourists come here to see it. Apart from walking through the mangrove forest, we can hop onto one of the boats for bird sighting experience. Charau Island is famous for fenny production. If you don't know, fenny is a local alcohol in Goa made from cashew. You will get this drink everywhere in Goa, but it is not exported outside the state. So if you're in Goa then don't miss to try fenny. Rice Magos is the oldest fort in Goa. It was built in 1551 on the narrow stretch of Mandavi River by Portuguese. The fort was used by Portuguese to defend their territory against Marathas. 
During the independence time, the fort was used as a prison to lock down the freedom fighters. You can see the freedom fighters name mentioned in this fort. Even though Rice Mogo's fort was such an important part of Goa's history, it was completely abandoned in 1993. Thanks to UK based trust which funded restoration of Rice Mogo's fort in 2008. The restoration work was impressively executed by Goa's well-known architect Gerard de Cuna. There is a gallery hall where the history of Goa has been displayed. From this fort you can get a mesmerizing view of Mandavi River and the surrounding places. Since a lot of people don't know about this place, you can expect less crowd here. I personally felt this fort is the best fort in entire Goa. Next to the fort is Rice Mogo's church which is also built around the same time. Aguada Fort is a well-preserved fort overlooking the Arabian Sea. The fort was originally constructed in 1612 by Portuguese to guard against the Dutch. The fort is divided into two parts, upper fort and the lower fort. The lower fort was used as a safe berth to Portuguese ships, while the upper fort was built as a vantage point to serve as a fort and also as a watering station for the ships. The word aguada means watering place in Portuguese. This fort had a fresh water spring that was used to supply water to the ships. The fort is comprised of a moat underground water storage a lighthouse gunpowder room and bastions the lighthouse at the fort is one of the oldest in india it was operational until 1976 next to the fort is the new lighthouse that you can visit as well the best part about the new lighthouse is that you can climb all the way to the top climbing the lighthouse might be difficult for elders and kids as the last stretch is quite tricky to climb once you are on the top you can enjoy 360 degree panoramic view Apart from this you can also visit Aguada Jail which used to be the largest prison in Goa. If you want to visit Lower Aguada Fort then search Sinkiorium Fort on Google Maps. It is around 3 and 1/2 km from Upper Aguada Fort. I'm sure you'd have seen the Dilchata movie and if you did you might remember the iconic scene where three friends conclude their trip to Goa and talk about their future plans. Well that scene was shot in Chapora Fort and it is mainly famous for that reason. Apart from the connection with the filmy world, the fort has a rich history. The views you get from this place are truly mesmerizing. Chapora Fort was one of the best places to watch sunset, but with the recent implementation of timings, the fort closes at 5 p.m. Avoid visiting Chapora Fort in the afternoon as there is no shade or place to sit inside the fort. Goa is not just about beaches, churches or fort. Goa is filled with some of the prettiest waterfalls in India, among which Harvelem waterfalls is one of them. If you are visiting Goa during monsoon or just after the monsoon, then a visit to Harvelem waterfalls is a must. Don't miss visiting Rudraeshwara Temple located next to this waterfalls. Apart from the waterfalls, you can also visit Harvelem caves. On the way back, you can either visit Amona Bridge or Namazga depending on your route. Amona Bridge is situated towards Panjim. This steel bridge is half a kilometer in length and it is totally photogenic. On the other hand, if you are going towards North Goa, you can visit Namazga. It is an open air area built in Turko Persian architecture. To reach the mosque, you will have to walk through a narrow road for about 5 minutes. The place might look abandoned, but it is not. It is a protected monument and you will find few tourists at this place. Local Muslims do gather here for prayers during Eid. Para Road is a scenic stretch of road guarded by coconut trees on both sides. Although this place has been featured in so many movies, it got popular after Days Zindagi. This is where Alia Bhatt and Shahrukh Khan would be cycling in one of the songs. This stretch is 800 meters long and it is totally insta-worthy. You can visit this place to click some amazing photos or shoot some reels. Keep in mind that this road is not meant to be a tourist spot. It is used by locals for their daily commute. Make sure not to disturb the traffic as the local panchayat has already put up a sign for no parking on this stretch. If nuisance continues, they might even ban photography on this road. I would suggest you to come here early in the morning so that there won't be any traffic or other tourists. If you are a photo freak, then you should head to Fontenas in Panjim. It is probably the most Instagram spot in Goa. Fontenas is also called as the Latin Quarters. and this is a place where portuguese used to live you will see beautiful and colorful houses in indo-portugal architecture 
you can walk inside Fontana's to find the perfect spot to take photos for your Instagram. Speaking of Instagram, if you're not following us on Instagram, then do follow us there. I will leave a link to our Instagram profile in the description box below. Fontana's is best explored on foot, so park your vehicle somewhere and start walking through the narrow roads of Fontana's. There are many spots worth taking photos. You can take this screenshot for your reference. The food options inside Fontana's is limited, but they are really good. You can visit Viva Goa for authentic Goan food, Joseph Bar to enjoy local drink, or Confiteria 31 January to grab yourself some delicious bakery items. Goa has some of the most beautiful temples, which a lot of people don't know about. If you are visiting Goa with family, then you can add couple of temples to your itinerary. Most of the popular temples are located in Mardol town in Ponda Taluk. If you are travelling from Panjim side, you can take a 20 minutes ferry ride to reach the other side of Juwari river. While there are many temples in this area, the most popular one is Sri Mangesh temple dedicated to Lord Shiva. It is quite common to see huge crowd here as a lot of locals and tourists visit this temple regularly. Apart from Mangesh temple, you can also visit Mahalasa Narayani temple which is really beautiful. Another beautiful temple is the Lakshmi Narasimha temple. The highlight of this temple is its Pushkarni. The place was so calm and peaceful that I cannot explain it in words. We have seen casinos in a lot of movies. But in Goa, you can experience one for yourself. Goa has the best casinos in India. If you are wondering, isn't gambling is illegal in India, then the answer is yes, it's illegal. But except for Goa, Daman and Sikkim. You will find two kinds of casinos in Goa, land casinos and cruise casinos. 90% of the casinos are located in Panjim and you cannot go unnoticed when you are exploring Panjim. There are charges for entering casinos and the prices differ from one casino to another. With the entry ticket, you usually get chips worth 1000 rupees to play. We visited Big Daddy Casino which was good for the price we paid. Once you enter casino, you will get access to unlimited alcohol, unlimited food, live entertainment and playing area. Rowlet, Andar Bahar, Blackjack and Poker are some of the popular games here. In short, it's a different world out there. I'm not promoting gambling here, but if you want to experience casino, then Goa is the best place to try. Gambling is quite addictive, so visit it just for your experience. If you're one of those who is interested in history, architecture and culture, then you must visit a museum in Goa. There are many museums in Goa, among which Houses of Goa Museum is one of the popular museums. It is built in the shape of a boat and that in itself is highlight of this place. It is a three-story modern building exhibiting various architectural drawings, history of Goa and a few artifacts. Unlike traditional museums, this place doesn't have a lot of vintage items. Apart from learning a little bit about history and architecture, you can take some beautiful photos here. Next to the museum is Mario Miranda's art gallery. For those who don't know about him, Mario Miranda was a very famous cartoonist based in Goa. The art gallery has a very beautiful collection of his works. Donapala is located on the sea stretch that spans from Panjim. This place has been featured in so many movies. If you remember Ajay Devgan's Singham movie, it was shot at this place. Because Donapolo is so popular, you can expect a lot of crowds here. There was some renovation work going on, because of which we couldn't go till the viewpoint. From this viewpoint, you get a 360 degree view of Arabian Sea and the surrounding places. Donapolo is an amazing place towards the sunset as well. That was my list of top 20 places to see in North Goa. Let me know which is your favorite in the comment section below. If you know any other place that deserves to be on this list, then do let me know in the comment section as well. If you like this video, then hit on that like button. If you are new to this channel, then hit on the subscribe button. If you haven't watched my previous video of complete guide to Goa, then click on this video to see it. I'll see you in my next video. Until then, keep traveling.